Chapter 6 All that year, the animals worked like slaves. Throughout the spring and summer, they worked a 60-hour week. In August, Napoleon announced that there would be voluntary work on Sunday afternoons. Any animal who doesn't volunteer will have his rations reduced by half. Quite right, comrade. Only fair. The harvest was a little less successful than in the previous year. The coming winter would be a hard one. The windmill presented unexpected difficulties. Breaking up and moving the stones was a slow, laborious process. Only the incredible strength of Boxer made it possible. Clover warned him sometimes to be careful not to overstrain himself. But Boxer would never listen to her. His two slogans, I will work harder, and Napoleon is always right, were his answer to all problems. The animals had just enough food that summer, but there were shortages of other key supplies like paraffin, oil, nails, string, dog biscuits and iron for the horse's shoes. They also needed machinery for the windmill. One Sunday morning, Napoleon announced a new policy. Animal Farm would now engage in trade with the neighbouring farms. We are making arrangements to sell hay and part of the wheat crop. And we may ask our hen comrades to sell their eggs, he said. I'm sure they will be honoured to make this special contribution towards the building of the windmill. Once again, the animals were uneasy. The four young pigs protested in timid voices this time. Didn't old Major warn us against dealing with human beings, comrade? Yes, I'm sure he told us never to engage in trade or make use of money. These objections were promptly silenced by a tremendous growling from the dogs. Then, as usual... The sheep broke in too. Four legs good, two legs bad. Finally, Napoleon raised his trotter for silence. I have already made all the arrangements, he said. I will personally deal with the humans. You will not come into contact with them. Mr Wimper will negotiate for us. Napoleon ended his speech with his usual cry of Long live Animal Farm! And after the singing of Beasts of England, the animals were dismissed. By the autumn, the animals were tired but happy. The stores of food for the winter were low, but the windmill was almost half built now. Then November came with raging southwest winds. One night, a violent storm blew several tiles off the roof of the barn. In the morning, the animals came out of their stalls to face a terrible sight. The windmill had collapsed. They rushed up the hill. Napoleon raced ahead of them. Unable at first to speak, they stood gazing mournfully at the litter of fallen stone. Napoleon paced in silence, occasionally snuffing at the ground. His tail was rigid and twitched sharply from side to side. Suddenly, he halted. Comrades, 
he said quietly. Do you know who came in the night to knock down our windmill? Snowball! He suddenly roared in a voice of thunder. The animals were shocked beyond measure. Snowball? The hero of the Battle of the Cowshed could do this? Almost immediately, the footprints of a pig were discovered nearby. They could only be traced for a few yards, but led to a hole in the hedge. Napoleon smelt them. Snowball, he announced. But that miserable traitor will not undo our work. This very morning we begin rebuilding the windmill and we will build all through the winter, rain or shine. Forward, comrades. Long live the windmill. Long live Animal Farm. <laughs>